we are going to be going over today eight of my most used keyboard shortcuts. Um, we're kind of on the theme of how to save time and speed up our workflow and I sometimes take for granted how often I use these tricks and shortcuts and how much time they save me. So let's jump right in and start with the first one. Um, the first one is to hold your shift key down in order to scale proportionately. So um, I'm going to use my trifold here as an example because it's fun to look at better than just making random shapes. So let's say that my client um, saw this proof and said, you know, it looks really good, but I think this teacher's on call logo is too big. Can we shrink that down a little bit? So I am going to click in the left hand corner and select the whole logo. And then you can see my bounding box comes up Then I'm going to um, click on one of the corners and I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to slide it in. This way it keeps the proportions of the logo um, the same. It's If you don't hold the shift key down, you can stretch it all over the place. And especially with logos, we do not want that to happen. We want to keep it all intact and we want to keep it in proportion. So simply holding the shift key down while you scale is the way to do that. So that's keyboard shortcut number one, holding the shift key down to scale proportionately. Number two, uh, let's say that my client wants me to make or put this logo um, down here in the left hand corner above the phone number. So I could go through copy and paste and move it down there or the habit that I've gotten into is when I have the object selected that I want to make a copy of, I hold down all at the same time the control or the apple shift and alt. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to hold control shift alt and then I'm going to slide it down. Well, I'm going to let go of the shift because I want to be able to drag it wherever I want. But if you want to drag it in a line, hold the shift key. So I'm going to make a copy of it and move it down there. And then I'm going to select it again. Not that text though. And then holding my shift key, I'm going to scale it proportionately. So there we go. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to select what I want to duplicate. I'm going to click and hold my mouse on the object. Then I'm going to hold down Control Alt. Control Alt and drag it wherever I want it to go. Take the corner, Shift, and Scale. So, number three. Um, this one's kind of a cool little trick. I don't use it a whole lot, um, but I'm going to start getting in the habit of it. If you, you can um, switch back and forth your fill and stroke just by hitting shift and the X button. So this object right now is filled with red, but it doesn't have a stroke. If I wanted to switch that around really quick, meaning I want my stroke to be red and my fill to be zero. You just have to hit Shift X and boom, it switches it around. It would be the equivalent of bringing your mouse over here and clicking the arrow to swap fill and stroke. But instead of wasting that time moving across the screen, you can select your object and hit Shift X and it toggles between. So, um, and number four. Control D if you want to duplicate your last transformation. So let's see what that looks like. I want, um, uh, actually, I'm going to make a new artboard just to show you this one quick. Let's say that I want to, I'm going to draw a box. And let's say that I want to repeat that box all the way across. So I'm going to use my first keyboard or my last keyboard shortcut that I just showed you and I'm going to duplicate it by holding the shift control alt and sliding it. 
And now I want to do, I want to make like six more of these boxes across my, or enough just to fill my artboard here. So, <coughs> excuse me, in order to duplicate your last transform, which would have been this, making this copy of the box, if you hold Control and D, it pops another box. And you can do it again, and you can do it again, and again, and again. Um, another way that that works is let's say that we drew a box and then we wanted to um, shear that box. No, not reflect. Shear. Oops. I'm getting click happy. So we're going to hit the shear tool and the shear kind of angles your box like so. So that was our transform. We just sheared the box. So if you hit Control D again, it's going to keep shearing it. And then you can get whatever angle you want. And if you go too many, you just hit Control Z to backspace. So D to keep shearing and Z to bring it back. I do use that um, transform again a lot. So it's up here to object, transform, transform again, control D. So get in the habit of using that one. Uh, number five, this is the most basic one ever, but a lot of people don't use it and it's the select all. So you can see, I'm just gonna get rid of this artboard so it's not in the way. You can see when you're you know, full fledged in this big full design, that um, let's say we wanted to make another version of this or for some reason we need to select everything on the page. You can click up here and drag. Um, sometimes dragging isn't the easiest thing to do when you have to select everything. So the quickest keyboard shortcut to select everything on your artboard is Control A. And see, and even on when you have multiple artboards, as I have two of them now, um, it selects everything on all your artboards. So Control A, and everything gets selected. Um, number six, Control Two, if you want to lock an object, which I use this one all the time as well, because sometimes I want to just select part of my layout or one object out of 100. So in order to do that, I sometimes lock down pieces of my artwork so I don't edit them or delete them mistakenly. So I'm going to lock down my text, control 2, and my little um, sushi thing there. And then I'm going to select, drag and select my photo and text. So that way, now if I do a select all, control A, the things that I lock down are not part of the selection. There's lots of different times where you're gonna wanna lock something down. So, and in the reverse of that, if you want to unlock anything that's locked down, you just have to alt control two. So control two will lock and then if you add the alt into there, control alt to, then everything that is locked becomes unlocked. So two great shortcuts right there. And, <coughs> excuse me, number seven, control R to make your toggle between rulers and no rulers. So you can see right now along the top and the left, my rulers are showing and if you want if you're not if you don't use rulers or you want to just bring them up when you're trying to measure something control R toggles the rulers on and off that one I use quite a bit along with this very last one um, you can see in my layout right now because this is a trifold um, I have guides these little cyan lines I have guides so that I know where my panel is uh, for the trifold. Those guides are where the piece of paper is going to fold. So I needed those to line up my things. But 
sometimes when I use a lot of guides and I just, they get in the way and I want to see what the layout looks like without the guides showing. So the quick and easy shortcut to hide the guides is control semicolon. So by doing control semicolon, it takes away my bleed guide along the edge here and it also hides my cyan guides that I drug down. So you can toggle in and out of that. So hopefully these um, shortcuts, start using them, start getting used to them. Um, they will become second nature and they will be big time savers um, once you really start um, designing. So thanks for watching. Thank you.